Welcome to Berlin After Dark. I'm your host, Stefan van Quick. It is a little bit weird to walk back into an office. I don't know if you know about this, but I myself hadn't had a real job in almost eight years. It was when I left my last job at a marketing agency, which, to be honest, I was fired from. But getting fired at that point pushed me into a lifestyle that I fucking love, which is freelancing. And to this day, me and my last boss, we can still be friends, and he has me over for beer and barbecue when I'm in town. Freelancing. It's all about working on a different project every week, not having your boss, riding the planes, hunting your next big client. It's like being a cowboy. But on the other hand, sometimes you hear about stable income, pension, paid vacations, and you feel like an idiot. And God, do I miss paid vacations. Sometimes as a freelancer, it's a little bit hard not to let your professional ups and downs from interfering into your personal life. It's just your work and your personal life are so close together that it's very hard to separate them. But this also allows you to create a personal brand and with that engage directly with your audience. And amazing things happen when you engage with your audience. You know how you shouldn't underestimate the power of stupid people in large groups? Well, you shouldn't underestimate neither the power of amazing people in large groups, especially when they're pushing forwards to a common goal. When our first guest wanted to finance their album, they didn't even think about going to a record label because that's just so 2006. They asked for their fans to help finance their album and the fans came to a rescue and their album was successfully funded. Of course, Monono will be here playing some of their new tunes tonight. And engaging with the audience is all about knowing exactly what they want. Maybe it could be a little taste of home when they're abroad. And that's where our second guest tonight comes in. Rodrigo is kind of the hub between the Brazilian artists and the growing Brazilian community here in Berlin. And finally, we have Lola and Dami, which are a creative duo working on a huge variety of formats, from fanzines up to tattoos. And they're here to present their new film in Berlin. Stick with us. This is Berlin After Dark. Our first guest tonight is uh, the do-it-yourself spirit itself. Uh, it's a band that when they thought about recording their new album, they didn't even think about talking with a record label and just decided to do it themselves. First guest tonight on Berlin After Dark, Manono. Well, guys, it's a pleasure to have you, and we're looking forward to hearing a little bit about this new album that you guys uh, have been producing. Uh, let's start uh, at the obvious beginning. How did uh, Monono come around, and how did this all start? Thank you. We're all happy to be here. Um, it all started when me, M, and Vlad met at Factory Berlin at a jam session. Um, but basically our backgrounds are all very different. I'm from Slovenia, Vlad's from Barcelona, and we have a Swedish drummer and an Italian bassist. Okay. So the Berlin was like a nice juncture for all of us to meet and create this band together. Which is something that we hear a lot about, people from all sides of the world meeting in Berlin and doing something amazing. This and is the place. Yeah, it is a place. Because you guys want to give a, a really big step forward in quality. You yeah. didn't want to take no. the, the slow ladder, you really wanted to record it with all the tools available. Yeah, you know? yeah. And uh, it ended up being a crowdfunding, but what other ideas did you have to finance this uh, album before the crowdfunding idea? So, they were, they were again, the idea of, again, do we super, like, cost zero as we did the first one, mm -hmm. but we all agreed that was not enough. And, um, we got in contact with some students um, from Funk House, which actually were very helpful, and we managed to, 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 to get some demo mm -hmm. with them. And it was good, no, but it was, was a lot of effort, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of time wasted as well. Mm -hmm. 
So we saw that for a full album that was not like feasible. Yeah. So we had to go in a proper studio with a producer that knew what he was doing. It would just take too long and you guys weren't willing to wait. Yeah. 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 And uh, that's when you guys started to, to brew the idea of having a crowdfunding to finance the... Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, I mean, it's also right, just want to go back to the other topics that you got three things basically, and you got time, quality, and money, right? Mm -hmm. And you can kind of compromise on one of them. Yeah, and have another two, but you can't two. compromise on two of it, right? Yeah. So that's just the way it is. So, you know, we go to the students and we compromise on the money and possibly also on, on time, you know, and the quality is not good. Or yeah. we compromise at least money. If you put in time and money, then quality is going to be good when it comes out, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And, um, you already had a very strong connection with the audience. You always made a, a very active effort of, of having a direct connection with your audience. And that ended up helping to create a snowball effect where your, your audience members that were already paying uh, told their friends about the cool project. And that uh, helped it grow a little bit faster than just uh, on a direct level. Yeah, I don't really have any friends, so Petra, you take this one. <laughs> <laughs> right. So after we said, okay, we're doing Gold Watch, we need the money, we need to raise it, we're not going to go with the record label because that's going to take away the freedom. Mm -hmm. um, that's when we really started seeing it as, okay, how do we raise this money? And we, we are, are we willing to contact all of our friends, mm -hmm. all of our fans, all of our family members and ask for the support? And uh, we had to go through a lot of self-searching mm -hmm. to come to a point where we were like, okay, we're doing this, um, we're asking for this, we're not begging for money, but we are actually pre-selling yeah. our product, which was the record, and it's gonna be amazing because we know it, because we're gonna invest so much into it, not you, time, you're but money. You're bringing your A-game, and when you bring your A-game, there's no chance of, of, of anything but an amazing product. And there's no shame in going after it 100% and telling everybody, oh my God, I'm doing this something really good. Yeah. Would you support me? If not with the money, would you please share yeah. the information? Because that's turned out to be just as much valuable. And I think artists have this problem uh, at the point of when they need to ask money for their production that it feels like begging, but it shouldn't be, you know? You should be confident of your artistic output enough to say, okay, uh, this is worth so much. Is it, may it be selling a painting or asking for money to finance an album like you guys did? So basically we had to contact everybody that we knew, right? Yeah. That was the, uh, the starting point of the campaign. We had it clear that we had to exhaust every single person on, um, on our contact list on the planet and beyond that. <laughs> so yeah, in order, given that we had network uh, connections in common and, and friends in common, we just uh, didn't want to overlap that communication and not spam we anybody just, three times, you know. Yeah, that's right. So it's something that we really cared about not to um, over spam people when contacting them through. And to keep it genuine, because at the end of the day, you know, you're you're not a mass marketing campaign. You're a, a personalized project, you know, where it is only valuable if you can really generate an emotional connection with the people that are backing you up, you know. And uh, now that the, the campaign was successful, you guys have been busy recording. Uh, what, what's up now? So what's coming next? So we're going to be releasing a new album soon called Liquid Society. And it's going to be a professional produced album. That's obviously why we did the, the crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we had the, the support of, um, of working with um, artists uh, to do the, the design cover as well as um, as well as the recording, and uh, it's going to be oh crap. It's going to be there for you really soon, um, and um, released on vinyl, on CD, and on all digital formats. Mm. <laughs> that sounded rehearsed, man. Did you rehearse that? <laughs> well, you you got to know your sales pitch, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's oh, the other tip that I. <laughs> Oh, well, guys, uh, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, Manono, interviewed for Berlin After Dark, and they're also our musical guests, so they will be playing all these cool instruments here very soon for us uh, from the new album, right? Yeah! Amazing. Yes. Well, guys, thanks a lot for coming. Thank you. You're watching.
watching this and you're a musician or you're in a band from Brazil and you want to have a tour in Europe and Berlin, maybe my next guest is the right person for you to talk to because he is the hub between bringing the Brazilian artists into the European communities. So without further ado, Rodrigo. Well, so... What an introduction, man. Yeah. It, is it uh, right? Well, it oh is very God. accurate, right? Okay. In a, in a broader <laughs> way sense. So you started off uh, in Madrid before moving to Berlin. A big company, this kind of uh, consulting company and, and outsourcing kind of businesses. Mm. Project management worldwide, let's put it away. Yeah. And then, of course, after a certain while, if you have a little bit of, uh, of dignity, you quit. Yeah, yeah. just you know, before it starts killing you. Yeah, no, it started killing me. Yeah. So two years so after, it started little bit killing after, me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And that's when you started uh, to go into music? Well, I got back to music. Yeah. I, I started playing like a pandeiro and, and, and some instruments when I was 13. And yeah. then I had a band with epic names such as Jeito de Seduzir. <laughs> Which means a form of seducing. <laughs> oh my God. That's a very good name. That's a very good name yeah. for having fun later. Yeah. But yeah, we have this and, and I played so much uh, samba and so much chorinho. Mm -hmm. And Brazilian popular music started yeah. making events in Rio. Yeah, and it turns, turns out that Boss FM is more or less like this. People that have something to say, mm -hmm. uh, they come and, and we talk together, we try to work together. This, I, I hate this position of being like a boss of, of of someone, Some, sometimes it's necessary, but mm. it's much more collaborative. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and it, it, people tend to work harder in a yeah. project when they feel that it's a collaboration rather than making money for the boss. Exactly. With the work on Boss of Femme uh, in, in Berlin, it was very important to create a community from day one. But you told me that that kind of happened by accident. Yes. It was never a focus or never an objective. I never no. knew what to do, man. <laughs> exactly. I, I it mean, just I, happened. No, no, I'm yeah. telling you the truth. I never knew what to do because uh, the only thing I focus is to have good people uh, beside me. And every time that I didn't have good people uh, yeah. working with me, I screwed up. Yeah. Because then I was now totally out of balance, which I'm, I'm, I'm already a guy out of balance <laughs> all the time because I'm working so much and doing so many things and trying to sing, trying to do this and that. Mm -hmm. And then um, suddenly it happened. You know, so now I see that I have friends in the market. Mm -hmm. And from these collaborations, you started uh, Shadows y Perdidos, which is in collaboration with uh, our one fantastic director. Yeah. You know? And yeah. uh, that's a project where you're grabbing these artists that usually get interviewed, if they're musicians, solely about their music and asking them uh, a completely different set of questions to get their, exactly. uh, their, their ideas and their visions about this political situation in Brazil. And this is a part of, of, the, of, the, of the whole... Uh, uh, Boss FM kind of vibe, mm -hmm. let's put it away, because we, we are receiving loads of artists in Berlin. This is fairly interesting. I mean, we had mm. uh, Johnny Hooker, Lineker, uh, Linda Quebrada, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, coming to Berlin, and we, we never asked them anything. And, and really good, there was like, uh, last year, we've made 13 interviews. Mm -hmm. And this year, we, are, we already had Bia Ferreira, and uh, Linda Quebrada. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Cool. What is the, the importance of keeping these, these voices, or giving these voices to these artists at this moment? What happens now is that people don't know what they want to see, right? Mm -hmm. People just, you know, just screwing up like your, your, your mobile and everything, and it's mm -hmm. like a little, little. But these, we go uh, into a very specific target, and we kind of snap it in, in their faces, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. say, hey, you need to listen to that. You need yeah. to hear that. The way Brazil is now is fucked up. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, we have a president that doesn't represent anyone, not even who voted for him, mm -hmm. because he's uh, what we know he yeah. is. And, um, and everything is, is upside down in Brazil. So this is the good opportunity to, to use yeah. the, the internet space. Right. For a more profound uh, reason than cat videos. Exactly. Okay. And what tools have you been using for uh, achieving visibility uh, with Boss FM? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. It's, it's like I say, um, things kind of happen uh, organically for Bossa. I don't, uh, suddenly I know some reporters, some journalists, mm -hmm. uh, people from radio, people that have seen some, uh, some nice show or got interested about an artist or a, a song I sent to them or yeah. whatever. And they got catchy about it. And they say, okay, so let's collaborate, let's, let's... 
it's going back to what you said about yeah. surrounding you yeah. yourself from, with good people and amazing shit just of, happens. Yeah, you know? uh, of course we've put some money uh, yeah. in on Facebook advertisement, which sucks as well, and uh, and Instagram mm. and all these type of things that I I hate spending my time there. To be yeah. quite frank with you, if you are. Uh, uh, someone that knows what to do with this, please come to us, let's have a conversation, we really need your help, come. But you don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> I don't know what to do with this, man. I have <laughs> okay, so yeah, uh, that was just a job opening at Boss FM, you know, you can contact them. Uh, and what's, what's coming up, what's the future like? Okay, so this year we have, um, well, we have a recurring project happening, which mm -hmm. is the Hodage Feijoada, here in Berlin, which is traditional samba, once a month, was the most traditional food. Feijoada, we also add on Love top of it some coxinha, some, uh, some desserts and everything. Yeah. So it's a daytime event, once a month at Fessal Kreuzberg, and it's a family kind of event, so you can bring yeah. kids, you can bring your dog, you can bring your cat. If you have a turtle, you can bring whatever. I don't have any of those, I'll just go alone. Come along, okay. man. Yeah, you, cool. Maybe you go out with uh, some good results from that as well. Yeah. Cool. This was Rodrigo from Office FM from Berlin After Dark. Thanks a lot for being here, man. Thanks, brother. Pleasure. Yeah. <laughs>
Our next guests are a duo of director and designer that are here in Berlin to present their latest film, City Plaza Hotel. So with you, uh, Damian Lola. Hey guys. Thanks for coming. Hello guys. <sighs> nice to have you back in Berlin. Us. Yeah, it's a pleasure. And under such nice circumstances, uh, presenting yeah. the, the new film in the Ber Berlinale. Yeah. How has that been? It was, a, it, it was a really long process. We had like two years of, of, of editing and filming. So we are really happy that first it's finished and second <laughs> that we are here in, in Berlin. And that you don't have to deal with that anymore and yes, that it's, it's done. Really long. It, it seems that you guys have a lot going on your plates at the same time. Uh, how do you guys manage to, <laughs> to, to take care of all these projects and work on them on a daily basis and still feel that even working at five projects at the same time, that they're all going forward? Okay, so uh, really it's really <laughs> difficult stuff. So you have to be really systematic, mm -hmm. and you have to do, have. In a, your a, case, a, yeah. I'm 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 so I'm super yeah. like. <laughs> um, you know, a typical cinema, a, 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 a typical movie, it's always like a five-year process if mm -hmm. you're lucky. Yeah. So uh, when since the moment you have the idea until the moment you premiere it, five, six, seven, eight years. And you, re you really need to take care of the small little steps that in the end is, is going to take you to, to, to the movie done, you know. Mm -hmm. But you have to be really systematic and break down all, all the process and have like mini tasks all the time. And uh, what you said is really right. I mean, we don't have only one movie going on. We have like three, four movies going on at yeah. the same time. So the development process is really complicated. It's really long and you have to be really aware of uh, like small steps that are. Yeah, and I think it's, uh, it's nice if you can even cross small tasks on a daily basis to feel like the project is going forward in, yeah. a, in, a, bigger, uh, in a bigger picture, no? Yes, of course. Um, for example, in my case, I have so much energy and I like to do many, many things. Mm -hmm. And I try to uh, work every day on each project mm -hmm. to divide in my energy. Yeah. yeah, small tasks yes, and small a lot tasks. of projects that grow uh, yes. uh, uniformly forward. And uh, you're both obviously freelancers and we're talking a little bit about uh, the main benefits that you guys feel from not being constricted to a nine to five and how that influences the input, the creative input that you put out, uh, out there. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have your own time. Yeah. You can manage your own life. <laughs> you decide everything. You can work in pyjama, for <laughs> example. I mean, it's also a lot of work because to make it yes. work, you actually have to have a lot of contacts and you have to be aware of, of, of where you are, where you're going, you're going to be in, in six months and yeah. get the, yes. the people you need to be there in, in six months. It's a, it's a really active thing. Yeah, you, you need to yes. find the work before actually doing it. So it's like, twice the work, finding it and then actually <laughs> doing it. You know, yes. like, yes, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, instead so of just having a boss that comes to you every Monday and says like, hey, employee, this is what you need to do this week. You know, yeah. uh, you just have to go find a, a, a client and then do all the work for the client. Yeah, and but it's, it's really important because the kind of projects that we do and in, mm. in, in, in arts in general, you really need that extra time for you. Mm -hmm. There's no other way yeah. of mm -hmm. doing these projects w yeah. without it. Uh, <laughs> so you guys are very active in Argentina, yeah. but also are becoming more and more active outside of Argentina. How are you guys managing this, this interna internationalization of, the, of your work? And uh, until what point do you want to drag it? Do you want to go fully international or, or still maintain both bases? Well, I think that um, as Brazil, Argentina is also having a, a really big hard time mm -hmm. and uh, all of the money that it was f for producing culture, now we don't have that money from the government. Mm -hmm. So the whole uh, market for, for putting it in some way, it's, it's cracking down. Mm -hmm. So we are kind of forced to go outside and search yeah. for projects like everywhere. So right now we are doing like a strong bid on having like six months in Europe and six months six more, six month <laughs> six in, in, in Argentina, where we actually can develop um, like in more international projects that is 
Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we have much, so much more possibilities. I mean, it's not yes, easy. We have to really know the right people in the right time with the right kind of project. Mm -hmm. But if you do it, it's really good because you open yourself. We really don't want to lose our, our foot in Argentina because yes, it's mm -hmm. so we are really interested in developing our craft in our country too. Yeah. And um, what's coming up next then? I need a million euro for my film. <laughs> so you, you got it? You, you got a million euros my, and you yeah. want to support a film? Okay. And with a million euro I can do a wonderful film. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, if, if we get it. half of it, we make half of it. I need great one. Movie. I need the whole <laughs> one million. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, great. Uh, thanks a lot for coming here and sharing a little bit of your day-to-day -day, uh, experience and your uh, tips on freelancing as well. Okay? Thank you very much for inviting us. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. So that was it. Another episode of Berlin After Dark. An amazing project created by a group of freaky freelancers and what someone on YouTube once called the Daft Punk of talk shows, which is a pretty cool compliment. All the members of our team are working on several different projects and collaborating very closely between each other. And I think that is the true beauty of freelancing. When you have that extra set of time that you can dedicate towards exploring, experimenting and collaborating in new projects. I'm looking forward to the day where a larger chunk of society moves towards freelancing. But it's not just about waking up late and not having a boss. It does entail a certain level of activism. We as freelancers need to fight for better recognition as professionals. In many countries, freelancing comes with a series of extra costs, as well as having to pay your own taxes and your own health insurance. And of course, a lot of companies are taking advantage of this to avoid paying the cost them. So we as freelancers should be fighting for better job recognition and the same right given to formerly employed professionals. And who knows, maybe we might even end up with paid vacation because that's what I really miss from having a real job, paid vacation. That's the only thing I miss. So this was it, another episode of Berlin After Dark. Freelancers, keep on freelancing and now you can go play outside. <laughs>